This is what $30,000 worth of seed corn looks like. A total of 66 bags of seed and that is what I'm going to be planting today with this planter out in my 160 acre cornfield for this season. Before I head out with the planter to start planting, we need to get all of that seed corn into what is our seed tender here. This will then convey the seed into the planter. So we're going to be breaking all of these bags into the auger to fill the seed tender. Each individual bag of this variety that I'm dumping in, one of these bags costed me $415. And inside each one of these bags, there are 80,000 individual kernels of corn. If you take that $415 cost for 80,000 individual kernels, that means my total cost for one individual kernel that I'll be planting here later today is one half of one penny. Now that the seed tender is loaded up, dad is just folding up the planter. He still has 80 acres yet to plant at one of his fields that he was finishing last night. So he's gonna head off and do that. And I am gonna move the seed tender to the other side of the yard. While dad is out planting, I am gonna be spending the next couple hours in my office here because we've been planting now for the last seven days, almost consecutively every day. I've fallen quite behind in the office and I have a fair amount of emails and phone calls we need to make so here's a good time for me to get caught up on everything before we start running the race for the second half of planting. So I just got off the phone with the FAA and I submitted my documentation to get my drone licensed on the 31st of January with all the paperwork that I thought I needed and then they sent the paperwork back and now come to find out this one falls on me that I didn't fill in the bottom portion. The bottom portion I'm talking about is the FAA needs this affidavit of ownership. I filled out all of my name and information, but the thing I forgot to do and didn't realize is this thing down here that says notary of public that needs to be filled out. And because I need all of these licenses filled out for my drone before I can actually go out and start spraying, which I have my drone out right there. I was tinkering it with a little bit this morning. I need to have this license done and I also need to get to planting, but this is more important right now because dad's out planting. So I'm gonna head into town, get this notary signature on this sheet of paper. That way I can get this off to the FAA as quickly as possible. As I'm driving into town, I start to look and see all the neighbors crops that are already in the ground. It makes me a little bit worried that we might be behind where everyone else is, but the calendar's still early. I know I'm taking off right now to head into town to get this paperwork done, but if I don't do it now, we work almost all day and into some of the evening hours, then this might get pushed off. And because this needs to get mailed down there and the FAA is about three weeks behind, I'm prioritizing this as top thing right now. I just got back out of the office in town here where I got my notary signature. It's basically just this small little stamp that they impress onto the sheet of paper that verifies that the signature on here is actually my signature. So now for the third time, I think I have everything I need. I'll get this mailed off to the FAA and we should be good to go on the licensing side of things for the drone. Now I made it back to the farm and mom says she wants to show a video of her working, so. Well, I'm just standing here right now. I just loaded up some corn. I'm she has go to tell here. us about all the things she did. We'll just walk away. <laughs> Well, what I need to get done is I need to get my drone moved back into this shed because I'm going to be leaving the farm to go plant and potentially go dig. And I don't want my drone sitting outside because it's a $40,000 piece of equipment. So we're going to get this thing buttoned up and brought into the shed for the day. These white boxes I just offloaded into the back of the pickup. These are two different products that I got from the Andersons that I'm going to be applying to what will be my soybean acres with my pre-emergent herbicide here today. The first one is BioReverse. This is supposed to help break down some of the stock residue from the previous year's corn and help bring back some of those nutrients into the soil. 
And the second one here is called Sweet and Easy. This is a sugar additive. Again, this will be sprayed here today. And this is supposed to help encourage plant growth, help keep the plant healthy, ultimately, supposedly, as I'll find out come this fall, lead to higher yields. There he goes with the sprayer to go start spraying what is gonna be half of the product on one of dad's fields. And then I'm gonna have all of the product also applied over on one of my fields. But I am done helping out here for the day. It is finally time for me to head out and over to my first ever corn planting of my very own corn field. He just made the first pass along this headland. We're shooting it for about two, two and a quarter inches deep. Obviously there's plenty of moisture here so we don't need to go overly deep. And there is the first kernel of corn that I see and it looks like that's about two inches deep on my knuckle. Looks like he's got all the hydraulics on, planters in the ground. We are ready to plant. So when the planters are actually planting, I'm monitoring a couple things. Number one, I'm looking out the back window, making sure none of the row cleaners, those little aluminum pieces that you see here, that none of those are getting plugged or creating a big furrow in front of the planter. I'm also monitoring all of our displays. First of all, making sure that I am using GPS. That way the tractor will drive itself. And these two screens, this is for the Precision 2020. I can see my planting population is currently 35,000. And then each individual little pixel on here is an individual row. So if one row gets plugged or one row stops, I'll be able to see that on this screen. And then also I'm always monitoring the singulation, so how accurate the planter is actually planting. And it's monitoring that with a little sensor that's in each individual row where all the kernels get dropped to the ground. I also have these two dials inside the cab. So this is what controls the row cleaners that are, the, again, those aluminum pieces out front. So it's determining how much dirt, how much residue I'm actually moving. And then this little control box I only use if I'm using the markers, which I am clearly not here. And then also need this when I want to fold the planter up moving from field to field. And with our planter being fully electric, so we have electric motors on each row that spin the meters and also an electric belt that brings the seed quickly to the ground. We're able to plant up to eight miles an hour. Currently, I am planting at, I have it set for 7.8 miles per hour, but I am planting at about seven and a half miles an hour. Once we get going on the main track of the field, zipping back and forth and we're done with the headlands, we should be able to pump out just about 40 acres an hour. So this field should only take us about four hours. But I noticed one thing when I was punching on the screen here. If I take a little test of our tire pressure on the back four tires of the tractor, it tells us we currently have 26 pounds. We can drop all the way down to 10 when we're in the field like we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and start letting the air out of the tires. This is one of my favorite parts of technology. We have a little rock pile here that I wanna plant around. I obviously don't have my hands on the steering wheel. The planter should just bring itself all the way around it. Now that I have the entire headland section in this field done, we just got the main back and forth portion. So we'll turn on our auto turn. We are gonna up our max infield speed to, I wanna go a max of eight miles an hour and I will go on my turns at 4.5 miles an hour. And this should basically plant the rest of the field without me needing to touch the steering wheel. So here I'm coming to the headland that we already have planted. You can see it has a guidance line. So I'm not touching the steering wheel. I can even move this all the way up. It now raised up the planter. It's making a perfect light bulb turn. The white line is the line that the tractor is going to follow. The green line is the line for the planter since I have a GPS globe right there on the planter. So now it's making the perfect turn. And then 10 feet before it gets to the next pass, it is going to 
lower the planter to the ground so it should be doing that right about now it's starting to slowly lower the planter to the ground and now I am next on that next guidance line and that is how I will plant the rest of the field without me needing to touch the steering wheel as I'm sitting here inside the tractor cab and I can see everything that's happening with the planter off to my side and then also visually checking out back and once in a while getting out looking at the gauge wheels and the depth it's really making me think I'm only 25 I plan to farm probably till I'm 65 that's another 40 years I'm currently in an air-conditioned cab I'm in a tractor seat that kid you not has a massaging seat and I do not even have to touch a steering wheel at all to plant 99% of the field it makes me think if I'm gonna farm for the next 40 years is farming even going to look remotely close to what it does right now, which is basically my year one of farming? And I would beg the question that it's going to look drastically different. No different than it did 40 years prior when basically everyone was still using markers on a planter. No one really had GPS. Now everyone lives and dies by a GPS. We didn't barely had air conditioned cabs. Now it seems like everyone has air conditioned cabs. It's making me think, what's that next step that's going to happen in agriculture? Everyone seems to think, I even think it's autonomy. Maybe it's something drastically different. I don't know. I just thought that was very interesting to think back 40 years and then think ahead the next 40 years for my farming career and just realize there's probably going to be a lot of things that change and there's never going to be a moment like there is right now where technology is the same and everything's basically run from the cab because everything changes every year whether just by a little bit or a lot bit, everything's constantly changing. Everything was going good. I'm about 60 acres in. All of a sudden, row number 16 stops planting. This is the one thing I would say that as a human operator, I have this advantage over autonomy because now I just jump out of the cab, come back here, the planter, and try to diagnose what might be the issue with the meter. For some reason, there isn't any seed in here, and if you look at the other ones, it's still getting plenty of seed, so I'm thinking maybe this line might be plugged. Now we'll just back up a little bit. I didn't really change anything. The only thing I did was just make sure that there was seed in there, but we'll back up and we'll see. It looked like there was seed in the meter, so we'll see if it's gonna take now. Looks like it filled in our little weak spot there, so we should be good now. I now have my first $15,000 worth of seed corn planted in this field, which means it's now time to go out. Mom's back there with the seed tender. We're gonna load up my next $15,000, or roughly 40 units in each of these bins. Now that we got the planter loaded up with another 15,000 or another 35 bags between both the hoppers, we have 80 acres left to plant. We're gonna hammer them out. Now before I make it too far on this new seed, I need to switch the corn hybrid. That way it'll map it appropriately in the monitor here. So I have it loaded with 5665, so we need to find that in the monitor. Here it is, so we'll select that. We'll hit enter. We will assign that to all rows. And now if I come over here, you should see I am now planting. The orange is the old hybrid and the blue is the new one. Coming up on the last 10 feet of my roughly 158 acre cornfield for this upcoming year. Once the planter crosses over and you hear a little chime come out of that noise machine, my corn will be in the ground for the year. And there it is. I now have my $30,000 that we started the morning with buried in the soil out here. It is all about two to two and a quarter inches deep. And of course right now I can't find a kernel. Here's, here's one of the kernels that I planted. It hasn't started to put a sprout on it yet, but if you want to see this corn 
and all of my acres grow throughout the entire growing season. I'll be documenting, documenting it right here on YouTube. And all you have to do to see that is hit that subscribe button down below and you can see many more beautiful sunsets like the one that's happening right now. And with that, that's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. My corn is in the ground. The growing season is off. It's going to be a good year. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next one.